Welcome, I'm Wasabi, and today we're talking about the sanatorium scenario from Mansions of Madness. Nope, not that one. Nope, not that one either. This one. This is an awesome little scenario, and in fact it was the first COC scenario I ever ran, and it's still one of my favorites to this day. Before I get into spoilers, I do want to mention that this is for an older edition of COC, but like pretty much all COC scenarios, it's pretty easy to convert. There's a ton of videos on scenario conversion, and 7th edition Call of Cthulhu tells you how. You're a big kid, you'll figure it out. I'm not covering that aspect. If you're looking to run a scenario that invokes a similar setting and atmosphere to Shutter Island or the Lighthouse, then this scenario is great for that. If you're a player looking for this, then send this video over to your GM and promise them that it's short because we are getting into spoilers. So as the name suggests, the scenario takes place in a sanatorium located on an island just off the coast of New England. The premise is that the group has been invited to the sanatorium by the head physician, Dr. Brewer, for whatever reason you prefer. There is a handout invitation letter you can use, but it can be for whatever works for the players, whether they're journalists doing a story on Dr. Brewer's work, old friends, whatever. Though it is recommended to have at least one PC with some level of medical expertise, both physical and mental. So having a PC that's a doctor, a nurse, anything of that sort of nature is probably not a bad idea. Anyway, the opening to this scenario is awesome. They are being ferried over by the caretaker of the island, Ebenezer, and when they arrive at the island, he tells them to go on and that he needs to put the boat in the boathouse. Going up to the main building, the group finds that the patients are loose, the staff, including Dr. Brewer, have been murdered, and if they decide to run back to the dock, they find old Ebenezer with his head bashed in with a rock and the boat set awash hundreds of feet offshore. This was a really exciting scene, and probably still one of my favorite openings to a game I've ever run as it dawns on the players that they are trapped on a spooky island with a murderer. However, before we continue, I want to mention my criticism of this module's layout. It's well written and overall easy to run, but holy shit is the layout for the module terrible. Though the relevant handouts are nicely applied to the page where they are found, it makes the entire scenario's layout really chaotic. Maps, pictures, and hands with different text size and fonts are slapped all over the place, and I weirdly would have preferred if they just put them all in the back, which they did, and normally I do like having both in the back for easy printing, and on the relevant page for easy reference, but the execution here is way off. Let me show you an example of what I mean. As Blanche, gray hair, standing out on end, opens the door, Laird Hawkins, who has been lurking around the north corner of the building, comes running full bore and attempts to grapple one of the investigators. Back to the scenario itself, this one isn't breaking any new ground, but I personally think that's what makes it so much fun. It knows what it is, and this will not be the last time I say this, but cliches and tropes that can feel boring or played out in film and video games can be really fun in tabletop RPGs, and I recommend not shying away from them. One of the patients is a poet bedeviled by voices who, under the instruction of said voices, drew a sign in his own blood in his cell, and let forth a bubbly, gelatinous creature who is here to feed quickly and move on to another world once it feeds enough and reaches its next form. The creature then possessed one of the staff members named Johnson and had him sacrifice other staff members and released the patients while it moved away towards the lighthouse for shelter. Johnson then left with an axe in search of his next victim, a bird watcher staying on the other side of the island. After he sacrifices the bird watcher, Johnson turns his attention to the sanatorium, the sole source of future victims now. This setup gives the investigation a lot of energy because there is a radio for the investigators to call for help, but the Coast Guard will not be here in time and the investigators are forced to figure out what is going on while also having to juggle keeping their patients under control for the first bit and keep their eye out for a murderer lurking around. I'm not going to go deeply into detail, but basically the way this will play out is that there are an absolute ton of clues in the sanatorium, some disturbing imagery to make the players go a bit crazy, and a good amount of RP with the different patients. There is a lot to do here, and I could see the scenario being stretched out to more than one session depending on how much roleplay the patients your group enjoys doing. And next, there'll be more than likely a confrontation with Johnson either in the woods or wherever he thinks he'll be able to get an advantage over the group of PCs. And finally, once he is dealt with and there is no thrall to do the sacrificing for it, the bubbly creature will seek out to kill the players and patients so that it can reach its next form and leave this dimension. I want to talk about the monster for a second because it's an interesting creature design that is both extremely deadly but will be very fun for creative players. The monster is immune to all forms of normal weapon damage, regenerates health, and does 108 damage if it touches a PC. However, it is weak to fire, electricity, sunlight, and seawater, and is quite slow. The sunlight and seawater are fairly obvious how they come into play, but the fire and electricity are less obvious. There's a shed with about 22 5-gallon cans of gasoline for the generator that can be used to steer, hurt, and trap the monster, or the players could potentially jury rig an electrical grid with the generator to fry the monster up. When my players met the monster, one player immediately ramped to and fired a pistol several times into the creature, it immediately slammed down him, instantly killing him, and the other two had to scramble using the fire to burn it. In the end, they weren't able to stop it from entering the sanatorium, and it finished feeding by consuming the patients. Its transformation is like a bomb going off, and it absolutely levels the island. This explosion killed one investigator, and was the final straw for the surviving investigator Sandy, and we end the session off with the sun rising, the final investigator sitting on the edge of the cliff giggling to himself as a Coast Guard ship approached from the distance. There are some other pretty big elements to this scenario, but I'm trying to keep this short instead of doing a deep dive, but just keep 
keep in mind that the patients of the sanatorium are a big part of the investigation, and so you'll be doing a decent amount of RP as a keeper. Anyway, my final thoughts are that this is a great scenario that both I and my players loved. It's a bit rough both being for an older edition and the layout not doing it any favors, but I was able to run it my first time ever running Call of Cthulhu, so I think anybody can. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as your first scenario to run as a new keeper, but if it appeals to you, go for it. The investigation has great pacing as there are loads of clues to be found, and if the players don't know what to do next, you can push the story forward by having Johnson make some sinister moves to get some action going, or direct the players towards the next step. This works as a standalone scenario, or it could work as part of a bigger campaign. Maybe introduce Dr. Brewer in an earlier session as the seed for having him invite the players to this scenario. You could possibly even trick the players that this is going to be more of a downtime and recovery session at a nice seaside mental hospital after their last horrible encounter with the mythos if you're feeling extra cruel. Thanks for watching. If you'd like me to do more quick reviews of Call of Cthulhu scenarios, comment below. Like, subscribe, and do all that stuff that keeps the algorithm abomination satiated. Play smart, play risky, and stay safe out there.